This is James White with Freakin' Reviews, bringing you as seen on TV product reviews, gadget reviews, and more. Today I'm taking a look at the Always Pan, which has been advertising on social media. Now it can supposedly replace eight pieces of cookware, but is it worth a $145 price tag? That's what I'm gonna find out in today's video. All right, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored post. I went on the website and bought it with my home money at full price like everybody else did. I've never contacted the company. So the review you'll get here will be completely honest and my own opinion, not influenced by anybody else. This is one that's been advertised quite a bit on social media. Uh, I've had quite a few requests for it as well. They, the company says it keeps selling out and because it's so popular, so I definitely thought it would be worth trying. Let's first take a look at all the features of the Always Pan. Always Pan has a non-toxic, non-stick ceramic coating, curved wooden utensil that can also be used as a spatula or a spoon. Stainless steel steamer basket, aluminum body that delivers even heat. Modular lid that can let off steam or be locked in place. It features two pour spouts. It's a 10 inch pan, 2.6 quart capacity, 2.75 inches deep. The pan weighs three pounds, the lid weighs one pound, and it is compatible with induction stove tops. They say to use one to two tablespoons of oil with a high smoke point or butter when using it. They also say to use non-metal utensils and it is dishwasher safe, but they recommend hand washing. Perhaps the most important and the most disappointing is that the Always Pan is not oven safe. I do give the company credit in their advertising and on their materials. They're, they don't make crazy claims like some of the I've seen on TV pans do. They tell you to care for the nonstick surface by not using extremely high heat, not using metal utensils, not putting in water right after using it. Some of those I've seen on TV pans will show someone with a mixer doing nuts and bolts in there, which is completely unrealistic. The Always Pan does not make those kind of claims. I do find it kind of interesting that they say not to use metal utensils, but they include a stainless steel steaming basket which goes inside the surface. I have to wonder if that will cause damage long term. It hasn't yet for me, but I do wonder about that. Something else that's curious to me about the Always Pan is that when I first saw the video for it on YouTube, it had over 3 million views, but it was only about 100 subscribers and comments were off, which made me wonder why that is. My guess is that people are complaining about the price because 145 bucks is quite a bit for a pan like this. But I'm assuming most of those complaints are people who haven't used it. I've just finished 10 days of using this pan and we're gonna get to all of my tests right now. And try to keep in mind that the point of this video is the merits of the pan, not the merits of my horribly average culinary skills. Those should not be on trial here, although I know the comments will say stuff about it. But So I unboxed the Always Pan about 10 days ago and let's take a look at how that went. Very nice presentation, I'll give them that. Obviously some important stuff in here. Our basket. The handle's lighter than I thought it would be. The pan feels very thick, very uh, well made, very sturdy. Not much to the basket here. It says you might need this. They include this sponge for cleaning the pan with. They say that it's good for that particular surface. Just put it in water to activate it. All right, this is the curved right. wooden spatula that can also double as a spoon that is supposed to fit on here just like, like that. I guess it can fit either direction. Oh, I guess, I guess, <laughs> I guess that's it. There's nothing else, nothing else in here. All right, so there it is. Very nice looking pan. Let me see the lid here. The lid may be not quite as thick and impressive as the pan itself. That doesn't doesn't necessarily matter. They even have a little notch here so that the wood spoon can stay on there, it looks like. Pretty cool. All right, well, there we go. They don't seem to have any kind of a recipe guide, so I'll just uh, go off the infomercial that I saw and see what they made there and try to duplicate what they advertised and maybe a few other things myself. So I guess I'm gonna wash this thing off and get started. So for the first test, I wanted to do something that they were showing advertising, which were pancakes, and I make quite a few pancakes. Uh, I thought that would be a great test of the non stick surface. I actually did two of them, one with the oil freshly put in there and one without adding extra oil after the first pancake, and here's how that went. All right, I've got my pan warming up on five. I got a tablespoon of oil as they direct. I've got some Kodiak cakes. Let's start with uh, let's start with that. Now one nice big pancake. Let me see here. Oh, it just completely slides around. The nonstick surface is pretty impressive, even for a first use. I've had nonstick pans that I still have to dislodge. That just slid around in there. 
It doesn't do the, uh, the cool chef technique of sliding around, but still, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let's flip this bad boy here. Ah, very nice. This nonstick surface is no joke. This is a real deal for sure. I'm gonna try a second one without adding any more oil to so see if the nonstick surface can handle that. Well, that is a big pancake. I keep forgetting to put my utensil here. I guess it's something I'm gonna to have to get used to. Now this holder does seem like it's part gimmick and part genius. I know it's technically a spatula, but its curved design kind of functions like a spatula or a spoon, so you have to excuse me if I keep calling it a spoon. I need to get used to putting the utensil here because I keep putting it on the counter. I guess I'll get used to it. I like it there. I also like the fact that the lid can accommodate for it. So you never even have to take the spatula out. Very cool. Let me flip this, this big boy here. Oh yeah. It slid right out, even without adding more oil for the second pancake. I mean, it really worked just as well. So, I mean, I'm very impressed by this nonstick surface in the early phase of the game. We got a ways to go. I mean, look at this. I just flipped it. It's not even sticking. Very nice. I think the pancake test is a success. The always pan shows a pasta dish being made, and I don't usually make pasta in a pan, I make it in a pot, but because this supposedly replaces eight pieces of cookware, I wanted to try it out. I made the sauce and the pasta both in the same pan. And my questions were, how well will it clean up when that sauce sits in there for a while? How well does the side spouts work when draining the pasta? So I put it to the test with a simple pasta dish, and here's how that went. I've got some water boiling here. I should point out before I start, this handle on top, not hot at all. This handle over here, not really that hot. This handle, that's hot. I can't even really touch that. I also wanted to point out, you can actually use where the spoon goes as a vent that can be opened or closed. When the spoon's not in there, that is. I've got my pasta here. Now, some people actually use the steaming basket as a colander and they place it in there and cook it and then lift it out, but I'm not going to do that because I don't really think that's what it's really suited for. Normally I would use a deeper pot for the pasta. I would use a small pot for the sauce, but I'm gonna do them both in this pan to see if it does replace two different types of cookware. All right, looks like my noodles are done. I'm gonna to try to use one of these side pour spouts over there and see if that can help me get some of the water out. I'm just pouring the water out so we can don't splash so much boiling water on me. So far, so good. All right, that's most of the water. All right, I'm gonna leave this here while I finish up the sauce in the pan, and then I'm gonna combine them at the end. Grima chicken, star kiss tuna. And one of the reasons I chose this dish is not because it's elaborate, because it's not, but because when this sauce cools, it's typically pretty hard to get out of the pans I've used in the past. That's one of the reasons I use this in my pan test. So this should be interesting to see how this sauce comes out of the pan once it's cooled. You can also put the spoon face down if, you, if it's dripping, which is kind of a nice feature. Time to add the pasta. All right, this came out pretty good. Uh, after we eat, let's see how this co cleans up once it's cooled off. That's the big test. But as far as cooking goes, it went surprisingly well. Uh, I wouldn't normally use just one pan, but I did make it work and it actually wasn't that hard. So I can give the always pan. Good marks for the cooking. Let's see how the cleaning goes. All right, here we go. This has been sitting for a while. It's uh, usually hard to clean out. Let's see how it goes. First, I'm gonna try the soft side of the sponge and see how it comes out. Oh, well, pretty easy. Even where it's caked on down here, it's coming off. I think cleanup went, uh, went quite well. So now we move on to the next test. Another dish I wanted to test out was a bean dip that I've been making for years. It's very difficult to clean when it's been sitting for a while. So I wanted to see how well this nonstick surface did with that. And here's how my bean dip test went. All right, here we go. A little sour cream. We got a lot of sour cream. Got some Franks. A little bit of cheese. Once again, this is something I usually make in a small pot, 
but when I've made this in the past, and I've been making this for oh, maybe about 30 years, this is typically tough to clean out once I'm done. So i uh, be curious how this cleans up as well. But with these, these really high sides, it kind of does almost work like a pot. I don't feel like I'm gonna be spilling out of the side. It's, I kind of like the high sides on this. All right, I think this is about done. All right, let's see what we got here. Usually, I usually use this for bean dip, not just burritos, but I wanna try it on burrito. Came out nice. Now let's see how the pan cleans up once this is gone. Now for the big test, will these caked on beans come off easily? Let's find out. For this one, I'm gonna use the kitchen brush, which is my favorite. Got a little problem area right here I gotta work on. Maybe I'll use their sponge for that. Oh wow, that came right off. All right, well, cleanup was pretty quick. I wouldn't say that took me a minute or so. In the pot I usually use, that's much more problematic. So I think the, the non-stick servers did quite well. And there we go, good as new. So next up, I wanna try a very common ingredient, which is some ground beef. And I wanna try out the pour spouts to see how draining grease went. So I made a very simple taco meat dish and here's what happened there. I got some ground beef I'm gonna brown for some taco meat, see how it comes out and see how it cleans out. All right, I think my ground beef is done now. I have these spouts I can pour out the grease, and let's do that now. Handle is not hot at all, by the way. Not hot. Neither is this one. This one over here, definitely hot. Water. Taco seasoning. The instructions say to use medium-high heat, but the pan is best off medium or under, so I'm just going to leave it at medium. It shouldn't make a difference. You can see when I'm stirring it. Gnostic surface is still quite solid. Look at that. Very nice. All right, so I got my meat put away here. There's the pan. Let's uh, let that cool off like the directions call for and see how that cleans up. For this one, I'm going to use their sponge. For, just for demonstration purposes, I've been using just water and a cleaning utensil, then I add soap after the fact. But I want to see how much it can come out without using soap. And so far, it's working pretty well. So no pan review is complete without doing some eggs in there. I'm notorious for making eggs in every pan I actually review. So I want to make some scrambled eggs, see how the scrambled eggs work in the pan itself, see how the cleanup procedure went. And it really wasn't that bad. Here's what happened there. Time for some scrambled eggs here. Doesn't look like the gnostic surface is having much problem with this. It's coming right off. It's pretty good. I'll be curious how this cleans up though. That gnostic surface is pretty, uh, pretty good. All right, I mean, everybody has their idea of what a good scrambled egg is. I don't like mine too brown like some people do. So let me uh, go dump this out and then clean it out once it's cooled off. All right, let's take a look now. This isn't even really caked on, it's coming right off. So I think the non-stick's definitely gonna be pretty good. Dash of soap. All right, that was very quick. It cleaned up very nicely. I think uh, the non-stick surface is on a roll here. So I definitely want to try out the steaming basket and the steaming basket is a little bit tricky for me because the legs are so small. So you have to add enough water that it doesn't evaporate and ruin the bottom, but you also have to put enough so it doesn't overflow into the basket itself. I found that about one cup of water seemed to work well for that. So I steamed some broccoli in the always pan and here's what happened. So I had to play around with how much water actually will cover the bottom without going into the steamer and I figured it's about one cup. So let's put it in there boil that and then see how it works. All right, starting to boil, let's add the broccoli. Again, I kind of measured it out so the water was just to the bottom of that but without touching it. Looks like I got a good amount. So I'm gonna cover this up, check back in a little bit and see how it goes. All right, should be about done now. Let me take a look here. 
It looks very nice. Oh yeah. I think that's actually quite nicely steamed. Let's not just trust the fork test. You gotta give it a taste. Uh, it looks nicely steamed. Let's give it a shot. Hmm, perfect. All right, so that was actually perfect. I had one cup of water in there. I did it for about six minutes on medium heat. I think the steaming basket worked quite well. The only thing I was gonna say is that getting the steaming basket out of here might be a bit of a problem. You don't wanna to touch that. Maybe you have to use some, some tongs or something. Maybe like that. Maybe this is the way you're gonna to have to lift it out. I don't know. That small point aside, it definitely worked well for the broccoli. For my final test I'm presenting here are a couple of steaks. I, had, I read some comments online that people were saying that they had a hard time getting steaks brown enough. I didn't have that problem. I tried two different size steaks and they came out just right to me. So here's how my steak test went. I've got the always pan warming up. I got some oil in there. It's on medium high. Got my steak ready to go. It's been patted dry, salt and peppered. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice sizzle, nice sizzle. Some people said they had a problem getting uh, searing it because I, I guess because they didn't want to put it on high. I should put it on six and a half. So I'm not cranked all the way up so it shouldn't be too harmful to the pan hopefully. Before I flip it, let me see how well it slides around here. Oh, no problem. No problem. Let's flip. That's pretty good. I was afraid it wouldn't brown, but it's, it's definitely browning. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna have this rest and see how it looks. All right, the steak is done resting. Let's check it out. I think that came out quite nice. Let me give it the old taste test. My first piece of steak from the always pan. Let's see. Mmm, mmm. Came out quite nice. Let's try washing the pan of the steak residue and try a few more steaks before I wrap this thing up. All right, I've let this cool off. Let's, uh, let's see how much it scrapes off without any soap or water. My clongs have a flat surface, which is good for scraping. Not too bad, not too bad really. All right, let's add a little soap. Let's see what happens. All right, clean up quite nicely. Time for the next steak. All right, steak, take two. Ooh, I love that sizzle. Nice sizzle. All right, let's see how well it slides around here. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Let's, uh, let's flip it. All right, I think we're done. Oh yeah, I think we're done. Let's let this rest and try it out. And this seems to be not sticking to the bottom. All right, this should be done resting now. Let's uh, check it out. Steak number two on the always pan. I think that came out pretty nice. For my first test on this pan, I think it actually worked pretty well. I think I have enough information to wrap this thing up. So it's time to wrap up this video with my conclusion. Now I've been using this pan for almost a couple weeks now. Uh, what I'm showing you in the video is just a small sampling of the things I've actually cooked in it. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of the Always Pan. First up, it's a very attractive pan. It's a nice looking pan. I actually ordered the most common color they show in the advertising, which they call Spice. There are other colors available. Another pro I think is the built-in spoon and spoon rest. It, was, it seemed to be a bit gimmicky at first, but once I got used to it, actually it's quite useful. And I like the fact that they were able to design the pan so you can leave the spoon attached. It never really gets in the way. The built-in side spouts are actually quite useful for draining pasta, for draining grease. Uh, it was a nice addition and I think it works quite well. A definite pro is the non-stick surface, which I think is one of the better non-stick surfaces I've used. It's Nothing seems to stick to it. It cleans up well. I think they did a good job with that. The depth of the pan at almost three inches is probably the biggest pro I think on the Always Pan because it does open up some possibilities to use it in place of a pot. I do think the depth of the pan is one of the reasons the Always Pan is so versatile. The main handle and the handle on the lid don't get hot and also the basket is nice because it allows you to steam 
or strain. Unfortunately, we gotta look at some of the cons of the Always Pan, and there are some cons. The first one I read about in some comments before I even used it, and I'm finding it to be the case for me, and that is that the paint on the bottom doesn't seem like it's gonna last. As you can see there, it's already, it's already starting to uh, erode the bottom. I didn't really slide it around much either. It's, uh, it just seems like the paint on the bottom is not very durable. Another con is the small handle. This is just the same material as the pan itself. It gets very hot. This handle doesn't. This handle doesn't. They're different materials. This one gets very hot. Another con is the legs and the steaming basket are quite small. It makes it a bit tricky to get the right amount of water in there. Another thing is that the fact that the steaming basket is metal, you're not supposed to use metal on the surface anyways. I worry if that's going to be a long-term problem. And the two biggest cons I would say, number one is the fact that it's not oven safe, and number two is the fact that it's $145. I think the price itself is gonna dissuade some people from buying it. A couple other things to consider that aren't really pros or cons is that as versatile as it is, you can still only make one thing at a time. So even though you can make sauce and noodles in there, you can't do them at the same time. Most people have two pots or pans going at once. Another thing is that as with most newer nonstick surfaces, there's a certain amount of care that goes into it that not everybody wants to do. Some people are just gonna stick with an old school cast iron skillet. So in the end, if you have a pretty good collection of pots and pans, I'm not sure if the Always Pan is going to add much to it. It's a good starter pan. It's a good for someone who needs minimal amount of space. To me, this feels like about a $60 pan with a $145 price tag. I do think if you get it, you're gonna like it, but some people aren't gonna to wanna to get past the high cost. Have you used the Always Pan? Tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time.